We love Rick Beato and his YouTube channel. Not only is Rick an incredibly accomplished musician, producer, and engineer, but his presentation style is honest, knowledgeable, and entertainingly ranty when it needs to be. Who can forget the Apple video, for example? Let's not forget the Beato book, a hugely valuable resource for any musician now in version four. And keep watching to find out how you can get hold of Rick's book for free. Hmm. We love you, Rick, and your amazing hair. The hair, beautiful hair. In his recent live stream entitled, How Can I Do Better in 2021? Rick said this. I do wish that I did certain things better than I, than, um, than I do. I wish that my videos looked better. Now, we don't want to purport to be experts in YouTube production. We've only been uploading ourselves since March 2020, but we have gone the extra mile with our production quality and full length videos such as our sample rate one and 1176 and pull tech shootouts do draw heavily on that Peter McKinnon style epic cinematic production that Rick mentioned and hopefully make our videos stand out a little from the crowd. So we've put this little video together for you, Rick, taking some of the valuable things that we've learned on our journey so far on YouTube, and we're offering them up as suggestions to help you improve in 2021. Firstly, there's something very important to appreciate. This year, you hit 2 million subscribers. Now, that's no mean feat, so one could argue that you're not really doing anything wrong at all. And if we could pluck two key points that attribute to your success more than anything else, the first would be that you're being yourself, and that's the key reason why you've made such a success at YouTube. The second, of course, would be that wonderful, wonderful hair, my God. God, that hair, what I wouldn't do for hair like that. So tip number one, don't stop being yourself. Yes, some of your videos may be a little rough around the edges in terms of production quality, but it's that that helps give your videos their honesty, their candor and their integrity. You mentioned Peter McKinnon's intros in your video. His videos look amazing. He's got all these cool intros and everything. It's like, I don't have anything like that. And we think his intros are great. And we love a good intro ourselves, but where we do have an intro, we try and make one specifically for that video, rather than just having a generic one we use all the time. Whilst it can be great to dive right into the meat and potatoes of a video, a suitable intro can be a chance for the audience to gain a sense of anticipation, grab a drink and settle back. But always find a way to make the intro you, because you is what we want. You is why we watch. So that's tip number one. Don't stop being you. But we all like to improve, and we ourselves have got a huge long list of improvements that we need to make to our content on our channel in 2021. Improving is fun, learning is fun, and the sense of achievement is a pleasurable one. So let's dive into tip number two, and this is a biggie for a guy like you, Rick, a real biggie, audio. Audio makes up 50% of any video and is arguably more important than the visuals themselves. Nothing has people turning off or clicking away faster than poor audio. It's huge. We're going to look at one of our favorite videos of yours, Pro Secrets of Compression, to demonstrate. Louder without increasing its amplitude. Amplitude is volume. Makes things sound louder without increasing its volume. It's also used to turn down the loudest part of a sound. As well as it sounding like you're in an acoustically fairly awful room in Georgia with an omnidirectional mic that's placed somewhere in Colorado, we can also hear on several occasions what sounds like either someone falling down the stairs or EastEnders finishing. Only the Brits watching will probably understand that joke. But that's easily fixable by moving into a more acoustically sympathetic space and by getting the microphone closer and maybe using one of these, a labia microphone. Is that what they're called? <laughs> Almost. Now, that means you either have to have a cable trailing to your camera, DAW or standalone audio recorder, or use a wireless belt pack, which can be a pain, but you can invest in one of these, a pocket recorder. Here we see the brand new Zoom F2 field recorder, available in both Bluetooth and non-Bluetooth versions that comes with its own Lavalier microphone. And here's the slightly more expensive Tentacle Track E that comes with an even better quality mic than the Zoom, 
built-in Bluetooth for remote control via a smartphone app and also features time code synchronization to your camera. Check out Gerald Undone's review of the Tentacle E in the link in the description. He says it's one of the best products he's ever reviewed and he's definitely reviewed a lot of stuff. But apart from the included lav mic, the real big selling point of these two units is that they both feature 32-bit floating point recording technology, which means that you don't have to worry about setting the gain. They offer a staggering theoretical dynamic range of 1528 decibels, which means that the noise floor isn't lifted along with the audio if you need to turn things up in post-production. And more importantly, they're almost impossible to clip. Hello. The microphone will clip way before the recorder does, and that means you can literally turn them on, press record, sling them in your pocket, and treat your audio with compression and EQ as you would in post, and you don't have to worry about noise or clipping. We can also hear on the very live stream that inspired this video that you're playing back the audio from your laptop through speakers, and that's the audio we, as your audience, are listening to coming through your microphone. It's solo. In 1981, he just showed up with his Frank and Strat, now it's really easy to capture that audio separately in the computer, as you know, because we've seen you do it before, and mix it in in the edit. Just turn the audio you're presenting down a little in your monitors and try not to talk over it. Capture it in the computer and you can easily mute your microphone for those sections in the edit. On to tip number three, lighting. Lighting is another biggie and your video is only as good as your lighting. What cameras you use, what codecs you record to, and what resolution you're at has far less impact on the overall look than your lighting. And that's one way you can really improve production value. And with these more recent shots, we can see that you're getting really close to perfection. We spend at least half an hour, usually longer, in setting up lighting for our videos. And here's the simple four-step lighting technique that we follow. Step one, move yourself as far away from the background as possible. This will give you a better depth of field and help throw your background more out of focus. And this will also stop the lighting that will add to you from spilling all over it. Another nice trick for a creamy blurry background is to set your aperture or iris at a fairly low number. We usually go for somewhere between 1.8 and 2.8, although it can be difficult to keep your face in focus at these settings, unless you have a camera with a really good face detection autofocus. Step two, turn off any overhead room lights or ceiling lights. They're rarely flattering or appropriate, and it's much easier to get more professional results when you start from scratch. Step three, use the standard, much talked about, three-point lighting technique on your subject, you. This consists of a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. Your key light is the main light on you and should be ideally a dedicated video light with a softbox or diffuser set at an angle, usually slightly above your subject and about 45 degrees to the side. Get this light in as close as you can or make the area of diffusion as large as you can. This will add a lovely soft light that flatters the subject's face and really help wrap the light around them. The second light is the fill light and often not really required depending on the look you're going for. Let's add a fill light here so you can see the difference. We tend to use different color temperature lights for the key and fill lights, as this helps to give a sense of depth and three dimensionality. Although technically many experts say you should probably stick to the same color temperature, but we just like the contrast this adds. If you haven't got another light available, you can always reflect some from the key light using something like this multi-purpose reflector or diffuser. The third light is the backlight or hair light. Oh, that hair, beautiful hair. This can help make your subject really stand out from the background and we think it's an essential light in any shot. This is what a hair light looks like. This is what a hair light looks like. This is what a hair light looks like when you've got hair. It really adds that professional edge, although it can be hard to get it out of shot. If this is the case, consider placing it on a low stand behind you with you blocking out the light to the camera or just having a nice looking one in the background over there, as we can see here, which also lights up the cat pretty nicely. Talking of which, light your background with practicals. We can see you're doing this already, so that's great. We use colored parkans on our background as well as some LED string lights to add in a soft detail into the background. Here's our shot without, and then with the background lights turned on. Again, we've chosen a contrasting color to the key light to make the subject really pop. 
Really spend some time on lighting. It's the equivalent of spending time tuning and setting up the drum kit before recording it. And do test shots so you can see how it looks in the edit. Then refine your setup and once you've found something that works, stick with it. One good tip for exposure can be to set the camera's exposure to get the background looking how you want it. Then adjust your key and fill lights to ensure you're perfectly exposed. And don't forget to set your white balance. You can use an inexpensive grey card for this, or you can use something like a spider checker, which can be a really useful aid in colour grading. Tip number four, planning your content. The best video on our channel, to my mind, is the sample rate video. It's technically accurate, although a glance through the comments will see that many people disagree, but several universities have picked up on it and are showing it to their students, as we presented the information in a clear and concise manner and offered several easy to digest analogies along the way. Now, this didn't happen by accident. The video was written, edited, rewritten, and re-edited a total of seven times, as well as being fully recorded and edited twice. Even the silly oversized iPad intro took an entire weekend to plan and film, and we spent a ton of time pulling off some shots, edits, and graphics that nobody would miss or even particularly notice, but that just added to the flow of the video. Even the opening shot of James pulling up in the car sees the camera spinning, going right the way through the car, and then following him out the other side. How did we do that? I can't even remember, but it's the silly bits like this that make our channel, our channel. And as with recording music, the time put into planning and even rehearsing can reap rewards when it comes to filming and editing. As the sample rate video has done so well for us, despite causing the most controversy in the comments, I'm forever glad that we took the time and effort over it that we did. Always remember, these videos could potentially be online forever, so planning them well can help them to be the best that they can. So. On to tip five, and this is an important one as well. Consider hiring an editor. Mark is lucky, he's got a James. If he didn't have a James and was editing our videos himself, we'd get one out every six months or so, maybe even one a year. He's good at the big picture, the overall idea, the creative side of our content and knows exactly how he wants an edit to look, but he's no good at the technical side, which is fair enough. Sit him in front of a computer with DaVinci Resolve and a load of clips, and it's gonna be a very long time before anything happens. I, however, love editing. I love geeking out on the computer with the latest graphics cards, solid state hard drives, all that stuff. And I love educating myself on the latest updates for my NLE of choice, DaVinci Resolve. Mark doesn't, he doesn't care. Maybe it's an age thing, but that's one of the reasons why we're such a good team. He knows that he could waste time trying to learn how to edit, but his time is, better spent obsessing over YouTubers' hair. Oh, the hair. Oh, it's so much better than Christian Henson's. And a really good video editor can take your videos to the next level, as well as becoming a trusted quality control mechanism. Going back to the pro secrets of compression video, it's a great video with over a million views, but how much better could it have been if a professional editor had added some great graphics? The whiteboard works, but we feel it gives the wrong vibe. It's a bit classroom, which is fine, it's an educational video, but a really great editor could make this snappier, more concise, deverb some of the audio and increase the overall production value. And a lot of the big YouTubers have their own editing staff. We'd recommend watching some videos from Hayden Hillier-Smith. Hayden edits the videos for Logan Paul and has some great videos on his channel that break down those edits, reaching right into the psychology of an audience. A must-see for any YouTuber. So our fifth and final tip concerns your live streams. These can be very difficult to get right, and yours, Rick, kind of look like they're just done on a phone or a tablet or the webcam built into a laptop. The audio, once again, isn't the best, and we can often see the camera hunting for focus or changing exposure all the time. It's all very distracting and it's amplified the larger the screen you use. And I, for one, would love to see more detail in the hair. The hair. I just, I just want to run my hands through it. So we'd recommend you pick up something like a Blackmagic Design Atom Mini. This gives you four HDMI sockets so you can plug in up to four cameras at once and simply switch between them with the press of a button. And it also gives a dedicated audio input so you can plug a lav mic straight in or run one through dedicated streaming software such as OBS, which then enables you to seamlessly add screenshots, video clips, and cutaways. Have your editor operating the Atom Mini and you're good to go. 
A bit of kit like that is a small investment, but it will really up the quality of your live streams. So earlier in the video, we said we'd let you know how you can get hold of Rick's Beato book for free. And it's a really good book. So you'll want to do this. So we've just made the PDF available for download for free on our website. Just go to presentdayproduction.com forward slash Beato and download it for absolutely nothing. Mark, hang on, wait, you can't do that. You can't just steal the guy's book and make it available on our website. What? No, yeah, no, okay, you're right. So here's what we'll do. We need Rick to see this video because we've created it to help him out, to help him improve his content in 2021, just like he asked. So it's pointless if he doesn't see it. Now we'll reach out to him ourselves, but what we need you guys to do is to go to his, how can I do better in 2021 video, and leave a comment in the comments section and leave a link to this video. Basically, we're sabotaging Rick Beato's comments, which is probably against some sort of YouTube guidelines and we feel very naughty doing this, but it's for the greater good. We love Rick's videos, we love his channel, and we love him, especially his wonderful, wonderful, white, soft hair. Oh, it's like a squidgy kitten, but he needs to see this. So leave a comment with a link to this video on his video and we'll go through those comments, the ones you've left on his video and pick some winners, the best of the bunch, the most entertaining and positive comments and keep it positive. There's more than enough hate out there already. And if you can only type negative shit, then don't type anything at all or type that in our comments because we don't care. If you're a winner, we'll buy you a copy of the Beato book with our own money and announce the winners in a future video. Go and do it now. Go on. Links and instructions are in the description below this. And don't forget to subscribe to Rick's channel while you're there. You'll see us in the next video. We're so naughty. The hair. God, I love his hair. Look at his beautiful, beautiful, soft, white, immaculate, fluffy, wonderful hair. Like, oh, I've got this.